This video is going to cover question one, part C from the 2021 AP Calculus AB free response section calculator required portion of the test. Um, I cover each of the little subunits A, B, C, and D in their own separate videos because they're kind of their own separate little pieces. So this one only talks about C. Let's take a look at what they want. They want to know is the approximation we found in part B an over or an underestimate to the total mass of the bacteria in the petri dish we don't even need to know what our answer was in part b when we go to do this type of over underestimated game when we're talking about riemann sums it really boils down to whether or not our graph is an increasing graph or a decreasing graph just to draw something simple to show you right if i have a graph that is increasing right here and I come in and I have, I'm just going to give like two sides. Let's, there's a left side and a right side, maybe not A and B. We'll call this left and right. If I'm doing a right-hand Riemann sum, no matter what increasing graph I have, you can see that if I draw the rectangle that works for this, that's going to be an overestimate. However, if I come over and had a graph that was decreasing instead, so if my graph was headed down here, and I wanted to come through and again try to draw a representative left or right hand sum, left here, right here. You just draw yourself a very simple graph. From the right side, you can see now I would hit the graph there and I draw over and down. And so I'm leaving all of this space empty here. So what I can see is that this would end up being an underestimate. And if it was a left-hand sum problem, you would just be working the other side of this. You would just be starting from the left here, and you could see that on that, it would have been an underestimate. And if we were working from the left on this one, we would have ended up up here, and that would have been an overestimate. So I always just draw, because it doesn't matter how crazy or funky it is. If it's an increasing graph, we know that we're going to be looking at an overestimate. If it's a decreasing graph, then we know we're going to be looking at an underestimate. So just draw yourself a quick little sample of what that might be to help you understand it. The difference between this one and just sort of, you know, what you should kind of be saying is, well, doesn't it tell me right here that this is an increasing graph? Can I just answer that it's an overestimate? Well, that is just for the function f. So that, when we come to look at what we were doing on our previous problem here we were going the integral from 0 to 4 of r times f of r so we need to be able to figure out if that whole portion right there if that piece is an increasing or decreasing function well anytime we come to talk about an increasing or decreasing function that bells and whistles are, should be going off that we're talking about a first derivative game we can tell if something is increasing or decreasing by the value of our first derivative if we end up with a first derivative that is positive if our f prime of x is greater than zero that tells us that it is increasing and if our derivative value is negative if we've got an f prime of x that's less than zero then that tells us that our graph is decreasing well now what we do then is just kind of follow that logic and we say all right what's happening in our situation here so we have r times f of r and we need to just take the derivative of that so we're essentially we are going to ddr this entire equation we're going to take the derivative of it when i look at this i notice that i have two things being multiplied well if i have two things being multiplied that means i need to apply the product rule so my product rule recipe that I have memorized just goes FG prime plus GF prime. I label one chunk the F piece, I label the other chunk the G piece, and then I just break them out into their bite-sized little math problems. So F is R, G is F of R. And now I go find my G prime and my F prime, the other pieces I need to follow that recipe there. So the derivative of R, just doing our power rule here, you bring the one down, you'd get one times r to the zero when you subtract one from the power. Anything to the zero power is just one, so we end up with one. And then g prime here, this is just a notation game. This is f prime of r. Now we'll put all of that together to figure out what our actual derivative is. So then our derivative now, following our product rule, would be f, which is r, times g prime which would be our f prime of r, 
plus go grab the g piece which is f of r and then multiply that by f prime which is one and now what we need to get out if you remember the beautiful thing about this is we just need to know is that value going to be positive or is that value going to be negative we don't need to know the actual value itself so you've got to come through and start working your logic and so as we start here you say to yourself well what is going to happen with r well, R from 0 to 4 here, that is going to be a positive value, right? So we know that this is positive. F prime of R, that's where this information about F being increasing comes into play. Because it's increasing, we don't need to know what the derivative is. We just know that it's always increasing. This is always increasing. And so that tells us that our derivative is going to always be positive. So we've got a positive and a positive here. Then we get our plus sign. And then we go look at f of r. Well, f of r on this interval that we're working from, from 0 to 4, that's always positive. So we know that that piece is always positive. So always positive r values positive f values and so that would be positive and then times one one is a positive right and so what you can say at the end of this all is that at the end we know that what we're looking at is a positive derivative which tells us that this is an increasing graph well if it's an increasing graph and you're working with a right hand sum an increasing graph with a right hand sum is going to be an overestimate because our graph would go up and over and so we'd have all of this extra space up top here and so that's the logic that they would want to see from you you would tell them that what you have is an increasing graph with a right hand sum and so that tells us that this is going to be an overestimate and so on this problem, this part of the problem was worth two points. Really, they gave you one point here for finding your actual derivative. And then they gave you a second point here for connecting this increasing, decreasing, the increasing portion with a right-hand sum to tell them the final answer was an overestimate. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.